Okay, so welcome everybody. Um, on behalf of the organizing committee for the Researching Work and Learning 12 conference and my co-chair, Peter Sochak, it's really my pleasure to welcome you to this conference. My name is Kiran Richindani. I'm a faculty member in the Adult Education Program here at OISE at the University of Toronto. I uh, wanted to just start with the land acknowledgement and um, a little bit on the theme for this conference. Had we had the opportunity to meet in person, one of the city tours we would have planned is a trip to the Humber River, which runs through West Toronto. This waterway is significant for various indigenous nations that live in this territory. These waterways are not just places for trade, engagement, work, but are relational entities that are in need of respect, care, and mutual reciprocity. Today, the Humber River is a site of resurgence and regeneration of many indigenous communities um, who are taking great care to tend to the destruction caused by Canadian colonialism through the deforestation and pollution of this river. By taking care of the plants, the fish, the animals along the Humber River, indigenous communities are asserting natural laws as a viable way to coexist and to engage in community practices of Indigenous knowledge resurgence. In Canada, one of the ways in which settlers exercised their colonial power was by creating treaties, which were environmentally and culturally exploitative. Even so, these negotiations, in fact, have not been respected and have been the focus of an active land back movement in Canada. As we begin our conference, we encourage you to explore the relationships between Indigenous histories and resurgence and the work and learning spaces which we currently occupy. The 2022 RWL conference will, will focus on the relationships between work, learning and social change. We have a very exciting program planned. Even though we can't meet in person, we'll have the opportunity to engage with experts and practitioners from all around the world, including, including our keynotes, Adia Harvey Wingfield, Hong Xia Shan and Stephen Billet. We will explore learning strategies that seek to foster social change through greater equality of power, inclusivity, participatory decision-making, and economic democracy. Many of the participants in this conference will explore the ways in which processes of race, gender, and class stratification often structure connections and approaches to learning at work. We learn about the ways in which learning can itself be gendered and racialized and the ways in which migration flows through immigration, displacement, or temporary labor regimes in the context of globalization give rise to new forms of work-related learning. Several papers included in our program will explore the dynamic, the dramatic impact of digitization on work, work and learning. Digital technology has the capacity to increase an interconnectivity and augment learning and creativity, but it also has the capacity to deepen inequality or alter work-related relations of power, control, and resistance. We have papers which explore the particular impact of digitization in the context of the global pandemic, as well as the link between learning and employment relationships, which are characterized by the rise of new or rising forms of non-standard work relating to self-employment, precarity, and gig work. A number of presenters we will hear from focus on social economy, on nonprofit organizations, as well as an, on volunteer and unpaid work. Included in the program are papers on professional education and work-related learning in fields such as teaching and medicine. Our program also includes papers on the dynamics of, of apprenticeships and service work integrated learning, which have long played a, a role in, in how work, le work, and work learning, work-related learning unfolds. So overall, really, in, in line with our theme on work, learning, and social change, we invite you to reflect over the next three days on the context and politics which when, within which learning endeavors are situated and the ways in which learning and work can purposefully foster redistribution to bring about democratic and egalitarian global societies. So I wanted to then just turn it over to Peter Sochak to make a few comments. Thanks, Karen. Uh, thanks for starting us off so well. Um, uh, yeah, so my uh, part as co-chair in this uh, last portion of this uh, 
first opening session is um, is to give you a brief overview of the conference process. But before I do that, I want to take a moment uh, to either tell or remind uh, RWL conference series uh, registrants here uh, how uh, the whole series began and what its sustaining aims were. The researching work and learning conference series actually began as uh, the brainchild of Miriam Zukas, Keith Forrester, Dick Taylor, and Kevin Ward at the University of Leeds School of Continuing Education in England in the 1990s. The first conference was entitled Researching Work and Learning, uh, a first conference, subtitled A First Conference. This was kind of ambitious on their part because they actually at that time had no plan to have a second con uh, uh, conference, which makes you wonder why did they call it a first conference? Uh, but it's a testament to their foresight that they envisioned uh, a need for such a conference series at that time. Uh, those of you who remember, uh, there were very few uh, venues for this type of discussion. Uh, all the more so that they also envisioned the potential for diversity in this broadly uh, defined field of study. And this diversity of, of thought uh, and approaches is, is clearly being realized in this conference itself. Uh, they structured the RWL1 conference in such a way as to attract a broad set of scholarly conversations. And they also set and train a tradition of attracting both theoretically minded and applied approaches to inquiry. Uh, the establishment of a volunteer self-funded International Advisory Committee for the conference series immediately followed RWL1, and in turn, this helped to assure the event would run regularly. Uh, thus, the conference series has traveled the globe. It's landed in five continents so far, twice here in Canada, I'm really proud to say, over its 23 years of existence so far. So there's the thumbnail sketch of the history of RWL, uh, just so you know what you're part of uh, in that sense. Um, now, turning more to our uh, current conference or the current iteration, uh, for all the world pandemic events you're uh, personally familiar with, uh, the end result uh, as of today has been the series' first experiment with online conferencing, making the RWL 12 conference uh, unique uh, as well as uniquely challenging. I know for Kieran, speaking for Kieran and I, it was unique, uniquely challenging as uh, organizers and certainly uh, for participants in some cases it was uniquely challenging. Uh, not the least of which when we were together for this uh, session, we're going to be talking with uh, presenters and audience members that span 21 of the 24 global time zones. Um, at any one moment, in other words, a simple good night to someone you might meet in this venue is a good morning to them, or a good afternoon, or in some cases, good gracious, what the heck time is it uh, for someone else? So uh, be patient with each other. Uh, finally, uh, you've received book guides and instructions, um, and, and I won't repeat uh, the information there. Uh, I'll simply emphasize that all the sessions you will have probably noted already include substantial presentation time, uh, significant question and answer time for engagement between speakers and audience. And due to their role as leading uh, contributors uh, and thought leaders, uh, engagement with the keynote speakers was made a special priority. And so we've given considerable time, uh, a half hour uh, discussion following each keynote, uh, possibly more if the keynotes keep to their time uh, limit or, or cut a little bit short. So be prepared for that and be prepared for full participation. Uh, no doubt after becoming comfortable in the platform environment, I know I've become com more comfortable kind of minute by minute over the last couple of weeks, uh, but you'll be able to find and enjoy uh, the experiences uh, of both presenting your work, uh, receiving insights on it from others, and learning about the work of others. Although I hasten to draw your attention also to some other just features that I want to emphasize. Not only do we have incredible uh, keynote speakers, thought leaders, um, uh, we also have a book fair resource. Uh, some of you will have seen already, and I'll be, um, uh, we'll have that sent out to you regularly. Uh, occasionally, there's a slight revision to it, so it's worth looking at. And you'll see these and other announcements in the, uh, well, I'll call it the what's coming up email that uh, is sent out to you at the end of each day, ahead of the next day. Uh, so look at that. It highlights and, announce, uh, and gives you some announcements. Uh, there that are, are will be important for you. Uh, I also want to emphasize a, a special session for students on day two of the conference, uh, the, the graduate students meetup session. This is for uh, student researchers specifically, for them to network, uh, to think about their future as researchers together, and perhaps to think about the future of the field itself, since they will be the field itself someday, and they're already uh, central to the field now. And of course, I want to draw your attention to the results of the best student paper award. 
uh, competition. And these will be announced in our closing plenary. So a few final words. Um, if I were to emphasize one thing at this point, it is the importance that all presenters join, join their sessions 20 minutes early just to iron out any kinks, uh, any technical matters that might be, uh, you know, need to be ironed out. Uh, to improve everyone's experience. As with any event, there's a gen generic comment. Um, the more you, each of you invest yourself in the discussions in the sessions, uh, the more you and everyone else will reap the benefits. Be generous with one another and wherever you can, uh, seek to support your volunteer session moderators in organizing and running uh, the sessions uh, to improve the experience for everyone. The moderators themselves have contributed considerable time and energy from their lives for free. Uh, simply out of an interest in the area. And uh, no doubt uh, they'll appreciate your support in each session to just help things run smoothly. So with that, I'm going to bring the RWL uh, Toronto uh, opening plenary session uh, to, to a close a little early, and this will allow us time to uh, kind of transition to our next event. Uh, you should be logging out of this opening plenary session in a moment, uh, and then logging into the first exciting keynote speaker, uh, Professor Stephen Billet. Stephen will already be in that session. Uh, secretly, I'll tell you, he's, pre he's planning his technical uh, presentation for you right now as we speak, and, and you'll be admitted uh, at the posted time, uh, probably with a little bit of a grace period like we did today. And I'll see you there as a bit of a technical moderator uh, to start off the event. Uh, and so I'm gonna bring it to a close. Kieran, what do you think? Is that, that's about it? Yes, look forward to uh, speaking with everybody, having a chance to, to talk to everybody during the, the course of the um, next three days. Okay, perfect. Uh, so you'll log out of this session and uh, find your way into the Stephen Billet keynote session and it will start promptly uh, at the posted time. So you have a bit of time to grab a tea, a water or whatever you'd like. Uh, so we'll see you there. Bye everyone.